in today's video, I'm going to talk about a common ingredient in many processed foods, even natural and organic foods, and that's gargum. So what is gargum? Gargum is a food additive that thickens and stabilizes ingredients. It has other uses in cosmetics, skincare, textiles, oils, explosives, and more. But most gargum is used in processed food products, currently accounting for more than 70%. Gargum, also called jalan gum or guran, comes from legumes known as gar beans. The bean species name is Cymopsis tetragonaloba. When producing gargum, the beans are broken and separated into parts. The part that's anti-husk is refined and made into a powder, which is white or yellow-white and doesn't affect the color of the end product. The remaining parts, which include shells, are often used in animal feed. Being a type of polysaccharide composed of two sugars, mannose and galactose, gargum is low in calories, though it doesn't have a lot of essential nutrients. However, it's high in fiber and is often known to give one a full, satisfied feeling after consuming a meal. Many food manufacturers globally use gargum because of its effectiveness to stabilize, emulsify, and thicken specific foods. Only a little amount of gargum is needed to go a long way. It's highly absorbable in water and builds viscosity fast, even in cold water. When gargum is added to water, it forms a gel consistency that is stable through moderate temperature changes or pressure. It's also insoluble in oil, grease, ketones, esters, and hydrocarbons, so it works in stabilizing fat. And having little to no taste or scent, it doesn't alter the flavor of food. Common food products containing gargum are vegan milks, such as coconut and almond, dairy products such as ice cream, yogurt, and cheese, dressing, marinades, gluten-free baked goods, fried foods, pasta, and meats. With these foods, gar gum gives them an even consistency, texture, and creaminess. With fried and high-fat foods, it can absorb oil and replace fat. And with foods with multiple ingredients, such as certain meats and dressings, it can keep solid particles from separating. With gluten-free products, it can give doughs elasticity and volume, ensuring baked goods have a preferable texture and consistency familiar with regular flour foods. Beyond food, gar gum is also found in medications, skin care, and industrial products such as fiber supplements, shampoos, body lotions, laxatives, toothpaste, paper, textiles, and explosives. For many of the same reasons as in food, Gargum helps bind ingredients found in these items bulk them up. Gargum is also flammable on its own. Its flammability goes away once baked into food, but it's not safe to leave near heat or flames in its powder form. So is gargum safe? The general consensus among researchers and the Food and Drug Administration is that gargum is safe for consumption in specified amounts. There's belief and evidence that some people experience digestive issues and sensitivities, but this becomes more of a concern when gargum is consumed in high doses. The issue is gargum is highly absorbable. It can absorb a high amount of liquid in the digestive system. A lot of gargum quickly bulks up and can block the throat, esophagus, and intestines. This is not really an issue in food because often not enough gargum is added to create such a problem. However, this can be an issue with medications and supplements where gargum can easily be overused. Such an issue happened in the 1990s with a weight loss drug called Calban 3000. It went on the market and contained a large amount of gargum that it was able to increase up to 10 to 20 times its original size in the stomach. The goal of this and the drug was to promote fullness, satiety, and ultimately weight loss. But it backfired, causing serious problems in many of its users, such as esophageal and small bowel obstructions, even death in some cases. From this, the FDA banned the use of gargum in weight loss products. Other known concerns linked to high amounts of gargum are pulmonary embolism, gas, diarrhea, bloating, and cramps. Some studies found that people who had soy allergies also had allergic sensitivities to gargum. 
as well as those working in certain industries with very high exposure to gargum. Of course, these are unique studies and more research is needed to confirm if this is the case for everyone who have these conditions or circumstances. Nevertheless, the FDA still considers gargum to be generally safe for consumption in specific amounts. For instance, they have maximum usage levels for different types of food, such as 0.35% in baked goods and 2% in vegetable juices. So with all of this known, should you consume gargum? My direct short answer is yes with a disclaimer. Despite the concerns of gargum in high doses, most processed food products that contain it only do in small amounts. So it's unlikely you'll consume over the daily recommendation of gargum for it to be concerned. However, if you experience digestive discomfort after consuming a food product with gargum, you may want to avoid this ingredient. Though gargum has its concerns at high doses, it also has some benefits to health. Researchers have found that gargum might be valuable in controlling blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Gargum is a water-soluble dietary fiber, so it slows sugar absorption in the small intestines after consuming a meal. Additionally, it's been found to lower cholesterol, acting similar to glucomenin, which has been found to have a positive effect on LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and body weight. And because gargum increases in the digestive tract, given a feeling of fullness, it's been known to increase satiety, encouraging people to consume less and therefore lose weight if that's their goal. There are many more benefits such as treating constipation and irritable bowel syndrome. Honestly, when reviewing all this, keywords such as may, possibly, could were used a lot. So there is no certainty that consuming gargum can offer these benefits, certainly to everyone. Due to the health concerns, it's best to seek other safer and more certain alternatives to addressing such concerns. One way is opting for a whole food diet or close to it. Consuming foods unaltered or processed will naturally have the fiber and nutrients needed to resolve many of the conditions just stated. While gargum is considered generally safe, its intake amount is a real concern. It's best to consume it minimally such as when it happens to be in a healthy processed food or recipe calls for a small amount within the FDA guidelines. And if you find that you have a sensitivity or allergy to gargum, consider other gluten-free alternatives such as psyllium, husk, and chia seeds, which can provide similar results such as thickening. So that's it. I hope I fully explained what gargum is and any concerns surrounding this ingredient. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and share so others looking to understand this common food additive can discover this video as well. Subscribe for more whole food and nutrition videos, and until next time, take care.